Hey friends, so in our previous lessons, we have looked at concepts that revolve around backend development. Now we're going to focus on the frontend side of things by creating our Flutter application. We'll head over to our terminal and run Flutter create task list app. If it's your first time interacting with Flutter, I have a video that um, helps you to get started with Flutter with flutter i'll leave it the link in the description box below so let's create our app wait and here it is so we have where we'll work on, where we'll work on our sources will be in the lib folder so we'll be in our main dot dot let me close this so this is a default code that comes with it. Before we even play around with it, let me just run this application. So there we have our application. So bef uh, before we play around with the user interface, I want us to add some few implementations that revolve around our backend uh, logic that's in Datrog. So we'll first create a file called constant dot dot and inside here we're going to add all our endpoints from that frog so we'll start by defining the base url which ours will be since we have deployed it locally or it's running locally we're going to use localhost port eighty eighty. Next, let's now add the other endpoints. So one of the endpoints that we have is one that will get all the lists or task lists that we have. So the endpoint is as such. Then the next one will be creating a new list. And we'll find it in the root lists. Next, we have another one. They revolve around revolves around uh, in, uh, manipulation of a specific list so we'll just give it the name single list and its root is this and implement interpolation and then we pass this then we have another root for items then we have another root that allows us to get items for a specific list And we have another one that focuses on manipulation of a specific item. And we'll find it also in the same root. Then now we have uh, a root that revolves around database. We, had, we created or we implemented different types of databases, Firebase, MongoDB, PostgreSQL, and also we have our a memory in cache which we'll actually use in this uh, implementation in the flutter side but since we have everything here if you want to switch you can always switch from the one that uh, we're going to work on and switch it to firebase because we'll have all the endpoints here it's just a matter of updating the endpoints and also i'll add the logic as well then so we have in our databases we have firebase and we have the root in bbf base then we have mongodb which we'll find in mongodb root then we have postgresql which we'll find in postgresql root 
db postgres ql make sure you add the endpoints correctly to avoid any errors then we have we implemented also caching so we'll just add the root which is that then we have that is just like the general root for caching in case you want to use another type of implement another way of caching but since we impl implemented redis and we gave it another unique root inside the cache root we're going to specify that cache redis then we have we'll add um auth implemented authentication different types the basic and the bearer authentication so we're going to represent the basic auth which we'll find in authentication auth sorry basic and then we have bearer auth which we'll find auth bearer then we have the rest api but let's implement the main root which is api just in case uh because in this tutorial we talked about rest api you may want to implement graphql for example so you can add it in that in the root api and then specify a specific root inside the api root that focuses mainly on graphql for example that's where we are adding it and then so we have rest api is equals to api rest api great so we have added all the roots or all, all the endpoints that we'll need in our application we can close this another important uh, logic that we want to add now are the functions that will integrate with the uh, with the backend or with that frog our that frog project so we'll just call a new file and name it func dot that that will hold all our functions and we're going to give it a mixing class Great. So first things first, uh, for us to inter to integrate with our backend, we need a HTTP package. But we're not going to use a HTTP package specifically. We're going to use a HTTP client called Dio. So we'll just go to our Dio terminal and add that Flutter pub add Dio. It's a very powerful. Okay. A very powerful HTTP client that will help us integrate with uh, our backend. Great, so now that we have that, so inside here we're going to hold mainly all our functions, but we want to also have a place. Let's create a unique place where we'll handle the logic for dio http service so we'll just call it http service if you've been you've been on mob trust studio for a while you're familiar with this specific file i always put the logic the logic is quite the same and I always give it make sure that the logic is in a specific file on its own so let's work on this okay so first we'll import dio Hate. Then we're going to define a class and call it HTTP service. Great. Then we're going to create an instance of Dio. Great. And next day we're going to create a function that we need to initialize of some specific configurations on Dio. So we're going to call it init. We're going to give it a type of future http service okay mm -hmm. a 
sink and then we're going to def uh, define um, going to pass in a specific uh, argument of type base options it's found in the do package base options options and inside this option this uh, base options is where we'll find the option to specify the request method specify the header specify the content type so this is where we do all that and you find requests can be different remember when we were implementing like the requests or the routes or the endpoints that we have is once the specific ones that are quite special if you remember which is the basic and the bare authentication where you need to specify the header a, a specific uh, header but that is not the case in other applications so we're adding it this adding this here so whenever we're using the instance of http service um, we can specify based on the requests that we want to call okay so we say do is equals to do and then add in the specific options that is passed in our argument and then we return this great so there we have our initialized uh, our method that will initiate the whole process so once that is done we need a method a function that now will uh, perform a request we we'll perform a post a get delete and a patch so we want to specify that so first things first we will define the function as request and then inside here we're going to require a few things we'll need A string that specifies the endpoint or in that frog specifies the root and we have already specified all of them in our constant dot dot so it's just a matter of picking this and then we're going to specify the method so for the method instead of writing it in string I can use enumeration to do that and just specify them as posts get delete and patch great so we use that so method method great so another thing that we'll do is because we want to reuse this function quite a lot that's why we're using the method so that we'll be passing which specific method we want to request method we want to pass Another thing will be we want to handle the params in a situation where we want to pass specific data. For example, when you're signing up, uh, so we'll have define it as map of type map string dynamic. So the key will be of type string, but the value is dynamic. It could be anything. And then we just define params. But the thing is, uh, we need to, we're passing this, uh, null safety operator because not all requests will require you to pass the params that's why we've added that and another one we want to add is string dynamic query params in the case where our for example a request method of type get we need to pass the id on the url for example that's uh, replaced differently from when you're passing data in a body so we'll get to see that okay so inside here we're going to define a variable of type response there we have it so we're going to do a try and catch So that we're able to handle whatever is coming in so first things we're going to check if the method is equals to method dot get if it's a get request response is equals to Let's add an async here because the operation might require some waiting period. So await D 
studio the one that we defined dot get and then we'll pass the endpoint and in a situation where we have a uh, another parameter to pass to the URL we just specify the query parameters to this for example in the in dynamic routes where you need to pass an ID so you need we'll pass it over here then another thing will be data in the case where like when we are updating Yes, we are passing a parameter on the URL, but we're also passing specific data to the body. So we just specify that, json.encode. Let's just import this. Params. And I hope you now understand why we have these two separate. They are of the same type. But it, in another scenario, we would think that you'd need to just specify one. But as you can see, they'll be holding different information. That's why we have the two here. Next, uh, once we have that, next we're going to check if else, if method is equals to method.post response is equals to await dot post we pass in the endpoint and the data params great else if method is equals to method dot delete response is equals to await delete and we just specify the endpoint else the last one will be patch or update response is equals to await io dot patch specify the endpoint and the data so we are handling get post delete and patch great so inside here we're going to after this we just return the response and then inside here we return the exception for now great so there we have our logic for uh, HTTP performing HTTP requests so this is what we're going to use in our func uh, file inside here now let's work on this because the first thing we would need is to create a function that will handle sending requests uh, so first thing I'll just create an instance of HTTP service so we get to use it throughout the mixing class so we have um, our first function as send request so in all the functions that we're going to create they'll be interacting with this specific function and then this function is on that's going to communicate with all this that we have done okay great so inside here first things first uh, the things that we'll need are the endpoint we need the endpoint to be specified another thing we need is the method to be specified as well then what's optional is the params and what's also optional is the authorization header which is of type string if you recall authorization header great so 
next thing inside here now let's work on our logic so we're going to call the init and specify our base option so inside here our base option will specify the base url which will be whatever we defined in constant base url and just import this so we already initiated specified initialized our base url next thing is the content type so our content type will be application json next thing will be headers so we're adding this in the scenario where the header has been passed so if there's none it won't insert so authorization authorization header we're just adding that okay next thing is now that we have initialized this we head over and define a variable called response is equals to we need an wait operation so let's specify here as sync await http service this instance has already been initialized with a specific info configurations then we just call the request method so we specify the endpoint the method and then the params There we have it and then we return the response but before we return we'll get an error but okay we don't get an error but we need to specify it's good practice to actually specify data types on variables and also on functions for accuracy and the uncertainty of what you're actually going to receive uh-huh So we're going to receive a future response of type response dynamic. Okay, so here is our function. Now let's work on the next one. So that one is on we're going to use to send requests. So first function will be get lists. Actually, the based on how the app looks like, we now let's just add get lists. So as we go along, you'll get to see as we add it in our user interface so in our get list what we want to do is interact with the endpoint and the route that gets all the lists that we have so to do that we will come here and define we're expecting uh, the, the response or the data that comes from the backend from that frog backend to be of a type json object which is equivalent to map string dynamic and that so we're just defining that and calling it lists let's initialize it next we're going to now perform a wait operation so we need to add this to uh, as a sync and we'll come here and specify a wait then we call the function that we have just created send request we need to pass the endpoint and our endpoint will be all lists we already specified in the constant and it will be method dot get because we are getting all the lists and if you look at the backend since i don't want to go back and forth going back to the that rock backend that we created um if you go back and say in this specific endpoint uh the method that we need is a get so that you can actually get all the lists um, for that. And uh, the beauty of what we did in the previous lesson is that we were actually implementing the logic and then testing it by running call requests in our terminal. So these things are working. So we don't expect ourselves to be touching the data flow backend unless there's a situation where we need to. And obviously we can't lack that. Um, but for now, just to avoid confusion, I just want to focus on the flat application on this specific um, application that we're creating. So if you want to refer, you can always go back to the backend and see and confirm if the endpoint is as is and if you're actually getting the passing the correct method. But as for now, whatever I'm explaining is actually accurate. 
So next thing, now that we have that, we just create a promise. And inside here, we want to specify this variable is equals to, let's define our own variable name dot data as this type. We're just casting it to this, but we already know that it's supposed to return that type of this type of uh, data type. So now that we have that, uh, another thing that's good to implement is handling errors so we're just going to add a dot catch and inside here we want to how will we do this uh we'll just print out a form of a toast to the user in case there's an issue so we'll just say scaffold oh why do we have an error Let me see dot catch error. There we have it. And then inside here, I'm going to use a scaffold messenger dot of context show snack bar so we'll just display a simple snack bar showing the error const wow const and there's something here that is missing so when you're calling this request you'll need to pass the build context wow context great snack bar So our content will be will hold a text widget that says failed to fetch lists. Great. So and then at the end of this, we're going to return lists. So there will be an error because we there will be an error, but we need to specify this future map string dynamic that's what we are returning great so that's our second function that gets all the lists next we're going to get create a list so create list and all we have to do is what you need from when creating a list is a name right so let's say string name name of the list and since the operation that we're performing this send request requires a waiting, so we'll just pass in here a sync and then we'll just say await send request. We specify our endpoint, which is new list, and then our method, which will be method.post. And then we specify our params, which will be a map of a type of map string dynamic. So it will be name. And then we just pass in the name that we have received from our argument, function argument. And there we have it. Now let's work on the next one, which is get list. So if you want to get a list based on uh, the ID. So all we have to do, let's specify a sync. And then we just say await send request. We specify the endpoint as single list plus id and then the method will be dot get next we want to update a list so inside here we are going to need to pass a few things from the ID of that specific list to the name and then because we're going to be handling the error we'll need the context so the specify build context context sorry context wait 
So for our list, what is probably going to be updated by the user is the name of the list. So that's why we have this. And then the ID is to identify that specific list when it's being searched in the database or in the in-memory database, whichever database that we're going to, that you want to use. So all we have to do is just say await, send request, then we'll have single list plus id then method dot patch and then we'll have our data params and it will hold the name that has been updated i hope you're getting to appreciate how breaking the functions down really helps because we're really using this function a lot instead of repeating it over and over again we defined it once and then now we're just using it within other functions so let's work on delete list and all we need is the id so await send request which is single list and then the method will be method dot delete great so we are done with that now let's look at items so we want to get all items so in our get items we are there's something we had received here it seems we don't um in case of any error in this case we won't be handled okay let's just remove this for now so in get items um we need to specify a sync then since we are receiving something back from the dat frog backend let's create a variable that will hold that dynamic all items this will hold that data for us so we just say await send request our end point will be items and we're getting all so it's dot get and then we handle our promise create a promise there then And we want all items is equals to items dot data as map string dynamic. Then let's handle our catch. And we'll just use a snack bar. to print out an error so we'll need the context here okay dot show snack bar cons snack bar text failed to fetch items great then we'll return all items let's specify the data type for our function which will be future map string dynamic And there we have it now let's create a function that creates an item and we need a few things here we need the list id we need the name of the item we need the description and we need the status whether it's completed or not sync so inside here, all we do is 
call the send request function specify our endpoint method dot post params list id name description and status and there we have it Next, let's create a get items by list, by specific list. Get items, or oh, let's specify no, it's okay, by list. So inside here, since we're getting some form of information, let's create a variable that will hold that. Then let's call our request send request specify our end point items by list method dot get handle our promise Inside here we specify our items is equals to this dot data as map string dynamic. And then let's handle our catch. Mm. We need something very important. We need to pass in the list ID because we're getting items by specific list and this is the list is identified by list id so we need to pass this here you can also use the query params to do this and then dot catch error scaffold messenger dot context this is passing the context text you can also define this in one place instead of writing it over and over again designing the snack bar then just call it once then we'll just return items great next let's update an item so for the item we'll need the id the name, the description, and the status. Then inside here, we just call our request, specify our method dot patch then specify our params which will be name name list id list id 
description description and status status and we are done with this now let's do a delete delete item we're deleting by id send request single item method.delete great now let's work on the next thing which will be let's look at the firebase root so first thing we'll get lists using get list using firebase so inside here we'll implement the same logic as we have on get lists just come here copy it And all you have to do is change the root. You're good to go. Then we have create list using Firebase. Just do the same mold, create list, string name. Then we just specify this as Firebase. Then we have update list using Firebase. So we have update list over here. String ID and name as arguments. String ID, string name, a sync is this firebase then let's delete using firebase delete list just need the id sorry Wait. Firebase. Great. And we're done with the Firebase section. Now let's look at MongoDB. I'll just copy all this. So you when once I push it on GitHub, you'll be able to access it. And depending on whichever one database you want to use you just switch things up so this will be mongodb mm -hmm. mongodb 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 and then we'll change this to mongodb we're done with mongodb next is next is postgresql same old same old
and instead of like creating the specific functions you may decide to use one of the sets and just do like conditioning inside the logic itself but for simplicity purposes i'm just doing this either way we're not going to we're mainly going to interact with the first set which is this create get which interacts with the in memory caching uh cache rather than this uh, rather than firebase mongodb but since we had implemented the logic in the back end you should be able to just switch things up decide to use mongodb and it will work well um so we have postgresql let's see So I'll be leaving this logic here for anyone who wants to use it. And you can use actually that concept of conditioning where just say if it's if I want to use Firebase, just change this MongoDB to Firebase rather than actually, you know what? Let's see. Um let me just leave it like this. Let me not make it complex right now. Um so this will be PostgreSQL. We're done. Okay. So now we get into caching. So for caching, we were handling login status, whether somebody is logged in or logged out, you'll get to see that in the user interface. So we'll need a function that's called set login status and we'll just pass in the st specific status remember we said one means logged in zero means logged out okay so inside here what we'll do a sync call our send request specify our endpoint will be redis because we're using redis and a method dot post params logged in status there we have it that we want to get um login status So it will be send request our endpoint will be redis and our method will be method dot post get sorry then we handle our promise here There's nothing we'll do on this one. Okay, I'll show you how what we're going to do. You can either initialize it here or just define it. Create a variable called final response is equals to this. And it will pass in this value. So there's this way and the way that we've been doing. So there are those two. And then we're going to if um we're going to implement some logic, some user interface logic here based on the response that we get. So we'll get to see this unfold. Okay, so next thing we're going to look at is authentication. So create using user, using basic, let's use base, start with basic authentication. And one of the things we need from the user is the name the username we're making it quite simple and the password and inside here we'll call our send request pass in the endpoint of specify the method as post and then define our params. So we start with name, name, username, 
username password password and then let's handle the promise so inside here let's leave it like this for now yeah let's leave it like this because I'll get to show you, you know, what we can do is, because what is happening is when we get the response, whatever we get from this value, we want to be able to handle or manipulate the user interface. Let me show you what I mean. So inside there, we want to say if um, value dot status code is equals to 200, we'll come here and navigate if creating user is successful we direct them to the process of navigate to sign in okay else if it has failed we just inform the user that there's something that something has gone wrong so we'll need our usual build context dot of context dot show snack bar snack bar we'll have a text that says unable to sign up so that's the idea we'll add some logic here and of course whenever you are navigating outside the um, widget uh, the widget tree we need to check if the context is mounted only then can we do this mm, inside here oh. okay so that's the idea. Let's perform an exception dot catch error. So we'll just use the same logic here, here. So we're done with creating a user. Now let's get user or in other words, sign in a user using basic authentication. So what we need is the user's username and the user's password. Pick um, this in the context as well. So inside here, um, we're going to call in the send request passing our endpoint a method dot get then params name username sorry password password and then uh, We need to pass in an important factor authorization header if you recall what we did in basic authentication if you don't you can head over to the specific uh, lesson um, so how we designed it in the back end to test it is the same way we're doing here so it should have the key word basic and then We'll pass in the use base sixty four dot encode, and we are encoding the username colon password. Code units. 
Mm. Something wrong. Okay. Let's do this again. So we have this, this. So we have authorization. And inside here, we're going to pass in a string. And the string will hold basic, the keyword basic. And then we're going to call a64. Sorry. A64 dot encode and inside here we're going to pass the username and the password dot code units exactly there we have it so that's what will be an authorization header then after this just handle a promise So inside here, we're going to also really end up interacting with the user interface as well. So we just want to do a simple check. If context is mounted, then we check if a value that status code is equals to 200. That means it's successful. We're going to implement um, user interface logic here once we start designing it else proceed to users sign in then we can handle our Touch. Unable to sign in. Great. So we have the logic to log in a user. Now let's implement update user. And we'll use this mainly when changing, implementing the functionality for change password update using basic string id of course we need the id of that specific user it's what is unique about the user string username so since i've mentioned that this logic will use it for change password uh, we'll need the new password and we'll also need the old password because why because basic authentication will will require to authenticate or pass this authentication header when implementing an update as well so we also need the old one so if the user inserts the wrong old password they won't be able to change their password let me write that so sync inside here let's call our send request specify our endpoint our method dot patch params username close this So we have the name hmm. we have the username and we 
we have the password which will be the new password and then we'll need to add the authorization header which will contain let me just copy this and instead of password we'll instead of password we'll pass in the old password because this the, the authentication has to go through successfully for them now to update to the new password makes sense okay so let's handle our promise do a catch in case we experience any error Yield. Failed to process. Okay, now let's delete user using basic string ID. await send request and point will be basic off plus id method will be delete and author yeah let's just pass it as that okay so we have implemented the crude for basic authentication we'll just copy this Paste that, and this will be now for bearer. Bearer, And then what we'll change is get bearer. So when you create this, a creating user, and then when we get the user, we also uh, we need to specify it will return for us a session token, right? So what we need is to specify the bearer text to bearer. And then whichever session token that we receive here is what we'll pass. Sorry, string session token. Pass it here. And yeah. At this point is when we're going to use get the session token. So we don't need to pass it there. So we're done with the bearer mm. and also for deleting we need to pass that Let's just add a string session token great the next function we'll work on is for the api rest api so let's just, uh, and it was getting a specific recipe. So let's just say get recipe. Sync. And since we're receiving some data back, let's just create a variable that will store that. String dynamic recipe is equals to that. Send request. Specify our endpoint to REST API and our method will be dot get 
Let's handle the promise. So we'll just say recipe is equals to, there's a way the data will come in. So we'll just JSON decode it. Pass in the value dot data and cast it as a map string dynamic. Let's, let's handle our error. We need to pass the build context and then use our snack bar. Failed to fetch recipe. And then we return recipe variable, specify our data type. Great. So uh, with all this, we have <laughs> we have created most of the functions that we're going to be using here. And we're done with that. So now we get to do the exciting part, which is now designing the UI. So in our main dot dot, let's clear most of this actually. Where is our, my home page, yes. Let's delete this class. Just remove this comments. Okay, let's start from there. So we are creating our task list up. And let's just Convert that to blue. So we want a class of our own here. Mm. So we're just going to specify, let's delete this. And we're going to specify our initial root. Then define that specific root. So our first root, we're going to be calling a specific class. Let's just create it to we'll start with a landing screen. New file landing dot dot. So let's define our stateful widget. Landing. We're going to have a scaffold. And this scaffold, let's set the background to white. For starters, let's call this so that we get to see what our design looks like. Let's just refresh. There we have our screen, our blank screen. Now let's work on it. Just remove the debug banner. Okay, let's start. First thing we'll have a body. And since we're not uh, adding an app bar here, we need to implement the safe area so that it makes, makes sure that our children or the contents in our body 
are in a safe area within the um, dimensions of the device and nothing is overflowing. So we're going to have a column and inside this column we're going to have a few children so we'll start by having an image and let me just get that image so I'll just create a folder here called um, inside here assets created added that image then in my pubspec.yaml need to specify that assets I don't have to specify the specific uh, image just the folder so it, it gets to see all every all the contents in that folder so image.asset assets task the jpg let's remove this const just reload okay this is wrong assets great now let's add more children here so we're going to have a text So let's define our text which will say organize your tasks let's give it a style text style Font weight and the font size. How does that look? Great. And then we're going to proceed to create another text. List and organize your tasks to help you stay productive there we have it mm -hmm. just add the padding then we just align the text great next um, we proceed to create a button arrow right color um first let's see okay um i won't set the button to Let's set it to a circular circular shape. Shape. 
shape const circle border. How does that look? Okay. And then Okay, okay, okay. Looks good. Wait. Um, so that's how our landing screen will look like. Um, let's try and center this, guys. Um, does that look beautiful? So that's our landing screen. Now let's proceed to the next one. We want when the user clicks on this. Um, it directs them to a sign in so I'm trying not to I'm trying to I want us to actually create the interface first and then we'll just continue we'll proceed to plug in now the logic that we have really worked on from the beginning of the lesson I hope that's okay instead of like uh, plug uh, putting in the logic as we go I don't know what you guys prefer so that now once we have the interface, we now start injecting the logic in the different places. And it, now it will make sense why certain things are, exist. So let's do that. Um, now let's work on the sign-in. I'm not using any architecture in this tutorial. Uh, so there's no like specific folder structure inside the lib. Um, so I'll just have a sign-in like that. Create a stateful widget and call it sign in. Scaffold. But in the situation where, let's look at first the, in the screen itself, in the landing screen, what's going to happen is when the user opens the app, they view the screen first. So the idea is when they click on this, not only does it direct them to the sign-in, but we also want to check. This is where we uh, we execute the logic for caching. We want to check if the user actually requested to be remembered so that to be remembered as they had already logged in. So we need to go and check in the Redis cache. If yes, we just proceed to log them inside. If no, we allow them to sign in. So that's the whole function of specifically or the logic that this uh, specific button will uh, have. Uh, so we'll add that. Let's just put in the signing first. And I think they will all come together, mostly the signing and the landing before we now get into the nitty gritties of creating and updating the lists and the items. Uh, so I think I'll just be adding the logic where it makes sense. Um, so we have a sign in. Let's see. Uh, we have scaffold. Okay, so we have our scaffold. Let's just set the background. And then we have our body, which will also be a safe area. And our child will be a form. Let's just add our child. Our child will be a list of children in a column. Let me just add that. Pick the class. Go to our main dot dot. Define a new root. Called sign in context let's import it there we have it so in our landing what we can simply do is
and just navigate to the sign in. There we are. Let's talk on our sign in. So in our form we'll have for our sign in we'll have the username and the password. So let's just define the because we already know we're going to have text form fields inside our form. Um and let's just define the children first here. So first we'll have a text form, we'll have an image. The same image that we had in the landing but i'll show you something um same image that it is let me just remove the const and then we are going to specify the size the width to 300 then after the image we'll have the text form field this first one will represent the username. So let's just define the text editing controller. Username controller is equals to text editing controller. Let's just add the password as well while we are still here. Mm, password controller is equals to text editing wow editing controller great now let's define the controller for this one which will be username uh, controller and then let's just add a decoration for it where we are able to define the hint text that will say enter username great and then we're going to proceed to add a padding here because our friends look very spread out so we set the padding age of 20 mm -hmm much better now let's proceed to create another text form field let's add a validator that's the beauty of text form field we can add a validator to check for us um, if the value is equals to null or the value that is empty return please enter username else return null great so we can just copy this paste another one here for password 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 great then another thing we're, that we're going to add is a form of a suffix. So what our suffix will do, sorry, we'll have an icon button. Icons.clear. Mm. Of this const. So inside here, we're just going to say set state password dot clear. In the case where we need to clear the I enter something and I need to clear it so that's what we've added next
we want to add a remember me feature in case the user doesn't want to log in every single time they just want to be remembered and all they have to do is log in and that's where the logic for caching also comes in when they ask to be remembered we'll cache that and all we have to do when the app logs in and they proceed to click the button in the landing page is if we check if the user wanted to stay logged in if they did they proceed to the now the main screen that we're yet to create if they did not want to be remembered they'll have to proceed to sign in so that's the idea um so we'll just create a check box list style for now we'll just say false oh set state so what we can do is let's just define a variable that will handle that remember me initially it will be false mm -hmm. so instead of adding a static value it just it will be dynamic based on whatever is passed so set state remember me is equals to value it will change according to what the user adds good and then we just add a title for this it will be a text widget that says remember me how does that look yeah, so uh, next um, will obviously be our button now, elevated button. Sign in. And then we'll have, let's just style this guy. Const. Yeah. And as uh, let's position this uh, button. Alignment. Let's sit at the corner. Mm, what else what else um then we need to ask give the user the option to sign up in case they do not have so we'll set it right at the bottom There we have it. Great. So we have a simple screen that allows the user to enter the username and the password. If they want to be remembered or not, they're able to clear their password in case they want to write it again. The button that will allow them to sign in. And in case they don't have an, ac an account, they have the option to sign up. So now let's work on the sign up and then now we can implement the logic of these guys together before we get into the crude operations of lists and items. So sign up.
dot dot scaffold let's get over to main dot dot and add that sign up context const sign up let's just import this and then we'll proceed to at the sign up stage navigator dot push named sign up Great, so in our sign up, let's just try and uh, refresh that so that we see the flow of things. So we have our landing screen. Proceed to click that, we get to see our sign in, then we have to our sign up, which is blank. Now, just a quick one, just for animation purposes, nothing. Uh, nothing fancy or let's just add a hero refactor hero then we have a child let's add a tag landing then I'll proceed to take this on sign in where we have the same image and child so let's refresh that and see so we have that as you can see that it's a very small minimal <laughs> animation but it's very beautiful now let's work on our sign up let's proceed find our background is dot white then body is also using a safe area let's have a form and in this form we'll have three types or three text form fields one will be for sorry I know one will be for name controller I'll just copy this paste it two more times for username and password So in our children, as usual, you can actually even pick the logic from here. Sign in. So we have a text form field for name. Enter name. Please enter name. Username, username. And then lastly, we have password. So now that we have that, uh, there's something very important that I'm supposed to define here. This form of ours needs a key. Let's define a key. Let's do the same for sign up.
Okay. Uh, let's just add padding around our form. Better. Let's add our image just to avoid making it look too small. Let's add that. Then we have so we have the name, password, username. Let's add our button, and our button will be equivalent to what we have in the sign in. So let's just pick that. Mm -hmm. sign up and we just add same logic let's just change this to a text button then we need to change the text to already have an account Sign in. Sign in. Looks good, huh? So this is a very simple form. Um, let me try and refresh it and we see how everything looks. So we have our landing. When we click on that, we have our sign in. In the case that he wants to sign up, we have the sign up screen. Great. Now well, let's just create a space between the password and the. Yep. Top. That's better. Oh, sign up. Yeah, that's better. Great. So now we have our landing. We have our sign in and our sign up. Let's add log logic to this, guys, before we get inside the application. Starting with the landing. So as I had mentioned earlier, for the sign for the landing screen, what we want to do is first check or get the login status of our user, because that's what will determine either we will direct them to the sign in and ask them to sign in, or we'll just direct them into inside the app after signing in, because they may have said that they want to be remembered. There are situations in terms of user experience where a user does not want to always sign in. Um, every time so they just want to remember my, my credentials and just let me in so with that um, inside here before we navigate the user to the sign in we're going to call the function get login status let me just Get the funk it's a mix in class remember so we're just going to call the get login status then let's just uh, remember we, we there's a user interface logic that we need to do here I was referring to this so we wouldn't be navigating it from here We'll be navigating it from here. That means we need the context as well, which we'll pass it over here. Great. 
and then we just come here and just finish up our user interface logic that we were talking about okay so we have our response that we have received i'll just do if context mounted if the response that has come in dot data success we're expecting a boolean so if it's true we'll do some few checks if it's not true we just proceed to use our regular snack bar and say and pass in the specific message so it will be response dot data message move the const so inside here if it's successful what you can also check if if the is now the message that's coming in if response dot data message is equals to zero that means they're not logged in that's when we proceed to pass in this line of code when i get the user to sign in else that means the message comes in as one that means they want it to be logged in automatically we'll just proceed to navigate to the list screen which we haven't created yet but we will but that's the idea so instead of uh, saying that we'll create let's just create a simple screen that will show that so we'll just say a new file and call it lists dot cfl lists wait just give it a scaffold wait then we just pick this quickly main dot dot specify the root over here context const then we just import that specific file but, uh, let me just call this my list because it's very risky no it's actually okay because a data type in that is a data type in that called list not lists okay we are safe we are safe um so we have that so back to our function so in case they want to be just logged in we'll just now proceed to call that that screen that we have just created called lists so i think we can try and see and now when get logins when we're performing this get login status it's going to check on the ready section so there are two things you need to check which i'm also running right now is make sure that your backend your dat frog backend is running that frog dev to make sure your redis is running so let's just make sure that we, that's that's uh working properly so with that done and we have added the logic in our landing screen here it is let's just refresh our application and see what will happen so there we are so if i click on this what happens we get an error awesome uh, so our base url is empty host is not empty mm. let's see if i go back to my we have it here and my backend is running okay Let's 
let's see get login status send requests specified the base url so so my base url is incorrect let's just add that now it's okay so let's just refresh again let's proceed to click on the button which is this when we click on it we get we proceed to the sign in that means uh the logged in uh key is zero or what it means is that either the there's no specific storage or cache anything that has been cached in the redis or maybe the whatever has been set is actually zero but because this is the first time we're doing this it's possible that the, there's no key of type logged in um, on redis so it returns uh, zero great so that's correct so now let's proceed to work on our sign in now that we are in our sign in we'll just head over to Our button here sign in and inside here we need to add some logic now let's proceed so first we check if the user has entered the required uh, information which is username or password so by since we used a form it's as easy as using the key of the form dot current state dot validate is the validate method and then inside there if it's um if everything has been validated that's when we proceed to call our function and our function is in the func we're going to use the basic uh authentication so for us to um login or sign in what we're doing is just getting a user so we're going to use this function getting using user using basic we'll come here and paste that well, let's confirm if we inject we have injected our mix in class not yet so we'll just say with func great so inside here uh get user using basic requires three uh, arguments the username dot text the password dot text and the build context and there we have it so now let's try and uh, just refresh and try and test that and see what we'll get so we'll just click on this to direct us to the signing let's enter any username Remember, we, this is our first time interacting with the system, so we don't expect to have this information. We're just entering anything to see. And there's something we need to add here on the password. Let's just go back quickly to our password controller and add obscure text true, meaning you don't, we don't want to see what the user inserts. Okay, great. And there we have it. And let's just enter it again. So when I click on sign in, it says unable to sign in. And that's what we actually set if the user does not exist or if the credentials are wrong. So since we know that this user does not exist, what we'll proceed to do is now sign up. So we'll just click on don't have an account and work on the sign up page, sign up logic. So let's just go to the sign up um, screen. And where it says sign up here, let's add the logic for it. As you can see, the fact that we worked on the heavy implementations, all those functions that interact with the backend, what we're just doing now is injecting them, which is quite easy. So what we'll do is proceed to check as we did in the sign in. If we used a form, so you check the current state to validate and then we'll proceed to call the function we're going to call is let's go back to our func um, is create user using basic 
Great. So we'll just come here, enter that. Let's inject our mix in at the top. Great. And what our function requires is the name, username, password, and the context. So we just say name controller dot text, username controller dot text, password controller dot text, and context. There we have it. So I'll just try and refresh again just for us to start to check if the flow is clean and okay. So we start by clicking this. They didn't they don't have any login um, status cached. So we just we tried to enter this. It told us unable to sign in because the user does not have an account. There's no account of that of that um, username existing. So let's just click on sign up. Let's enter a name like John and then username John. And then the password will be, let's just work on um, add the obscure text on our password. True. Great. Then back to our true. So let me just enter again. One, two, then sign up. So we haven't, let's see what we have done. So we haven't added, if we go back to this logic of ours, our function, uh, if context navigate to sign in. So we haven't uh, set the sign in navigation, uh, but we haven't, uh, so we haven't fallen on the catch section. Neither have we fallen on the else statement. So it's possibly on the if statement, but we're going to do it again with a new credential. But let's add the logic that we were supposed to put here, which is sign in. So if it's successful, it should direct us to sign in. So we hadn't added that. So let's try and do that again. Okay. I'll just restart. Click on that. And then I'll just sign up with um, Sean. Sean. One, two, three, four. Sign up. And there we are. It has directed us to the sign in screen. So let's try and sign in with Sean. One, two, three, four sign in okay let's check on that part um so here is our function yep we hadn't added the logic so let's just add that okay so since it hasn't fallen on the catch or else i'm sure it it fell on the if statement but we're going to sign in again and see push named and then we add our list root. Okay, let's do that again. <laughs> so we'll just go in and now just proceed to sign in. And there we are. Our list uh, screen is empty even. We haven't created anything else, but we are in. But I want to try something. I want to try and enter the wrong credential so that we get to see uh, how that looks. So if I decide to say Sean, but I give like the wrong password. So as you can see, it will tell us unable to sign in. Great. So let's clear this and enter the right thing. And now let's work on our lists. Okay. So we'll just clear, close this. Head over to our list screen. Now work on it. So let's start with an app bar. Just remove this const. And inside our app bar, we can pre-add a title. My lists. And then let's style it. No, 
Okay. Just add a font weight. Great. And then I'm just going to remove the back button. Great. Next, let's work on the, let's not center the title. Yes. Now we have some actions we want to add on the right side. Starting with, there'll be icon buttons. The first one will be for settings. Great. And the next one will be here. We're going to navigate to the settings screen that we'll get to create. And then the other one will be const icon more horizontal yep where we're going to view the list all the lists no actually um yeah we're going to view all the items from there all the items that exist from in all types of in whichever list it is in all the items that we have in the database great now let's work on the body so for the body we'll have a grid view so we'll have a simple grid view let's just design the grid view first and then we'll need to use a future builder to use it to go and get for us the list using the function that we are, we've already created. But let's first design how it will look. Let's create, let's, let's create a list view instead of a grid view. List view. And then inside here, you can just add an item count. View dot builder. Let's use the builder one. Item count. Let's just say five. We're just writing a static one before we generate. We dynamically generate it from the backend. Time builder. Build context. Context. And a card. See how that will look first. It has nothing, so let's just add list style. Icons dot list. There we have it. So that's the idea. We'll have our lists like that. Let's add, um, so we have leading. We also need a title. So let's say list. Okay, now let's uh the the style the font size is okay. We don't need to change that. We can add um trading yeah, 
that looks this looks pretty neat yeah so that's the idea of how our list will be displayed so now let's get instead of writing it uh static we uh, are creating a static value like um five let's use future builder to go and get our list from the back end but before we do that there's something else um the idea of this design is to have the lists also have like an action here down below to allow the user to add a new list so let's let's add that part of the logic first so the idea is if we have five we add plus one that's six but there's a reason why i'm separating them as this because uh, this five will be represented in terms of our variable or whatever we receive from there but we need to add a plus one because that extra index will be for that feature uh, where we'll have an elevated button let's just uh, add that logic just below here and say if index is equals to um, if index is equals to let's say six so that's the idea if we had an an object or maybe a list or a map uh that we had initialized at the top we would have just called them dot length called the variable and then passed the method dot length but we don't need to do all that because we already have a function what the reason why we're doing this is just to prepare it and then now we go and call our function so if index is equals to is equals to six that means it's going to the the index is the last one we want to return an elevated button dot icon const icon icons dot add and then our label will be a text widget It says add list. You can style it up. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, does the index start from? Yeah, I think that's okay. So if this is equals to six, see so it starts from let's see There we have it. So the items are five, but the last index will be four. So that's what we need. Um, so that means if I added plus one, because I want to retain this structure, I need to go and pick the last index, which will be five, because the first index is zero. I hope it makes sense. Um, yeah, that's the idea. But the fives will, will replace them. Don't worry about that it's not supposed to be static but we have seen how our add list button looks like and with that let's uh before we design the part where the user can now click and add list let's populate the data right and the idea is um yeah we'll add it inside here so let's come here and just add in future builder actually it should we shouldn't do it that way Mm -hmm. 
just come here and say future builder then in the builder we're going to pass in the context and the snapshot So inside here, that's where we'll pass this guy. And we'll just simply say if snapshot dot has data, we then display that. So we return that else. We want to display that uh, we do not have any lists. So I'm going to use my famous uh, package that I like to use, Flutter Pub add status a lot. There we have it. Now let's um, add this, add that status a lot. So we'll just say status empty widget sorry return empty widget Haven't seen it yet. Okay, let's see. Mm. I added the wrong package empty widget. But we may we might use status a lot as well at some point. Let's just leave it there. So we have empty widget. Let's just import it. Great. Then inside here, let's uh, add some attributes. So we don't need an image. Can add like our specify an icon to display using the package image dot image four. I'll pick the image four. Then for the title, I'll just say no lists. And then for the subtitle no this available yet title textile Let's set the font size to 22 color Point weight. And then for the subtitle, font size, color. Mm. gray let's see how that will look and then we want it to be centered let's just center it factor center and lastly we'll just um let's see how that will look first we have an error mm -hmm. so we turn this Other than the builder, there's another thing we need to add, which is a future. And the future, we're going to pass the function. It's one of those ones, get lists. This one. 
uh, this one get lists it will get all the lists that we have let me just inject the mixing class and inside here what do we need to pass context okay let's continue to look at why we have this error context snapshot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. else let's add a return here there we have it okay so For now, let's not change the, there's this static data that we've added here. Let's just leave it like that first and try and run this code and see what we'll get back. What we're expecting, since we know we don't have any lists, we expect to view this empty widget. So let's, let me just start from the start just to look at the user flow. If the user flow is okay. We just add in our credentials, sign in. Hmm, okay. We expect an empty. It's happening. Get lists. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's um since that is not working let's just replace the static data Get data dot length and then we'll pick this place it here first thing and then uh, since we want to have this uh, empty widget what we can do is Honestly, I feel like this, we're not going to use it. Uh, what we can do, you can say if snapshot, sorry, snapshot dot data dot length is equals to zero. That's when we proceed to show this. And retain that on the else statement but also if the snapshot dot data dot length is empty sorry forgot it's a map and not at least so it's a map so we have to use is empty yeah so if I save that there we have it that's what I was trying to display was it the data is empty what it comes in form of an empty map that's what's happening so when it comes empty we display that else we're going to display the list for view builder and we have also added the scenario where if the snapshot does not have data we just display this for error handling purposes i will also uh, use a scaffold.messenger the snack bar to display to the user what the problem could be um so yeah we have that let's just um add as i can see it's quite wide let's resize it by using um a sized box and then we just specify the width Mm 
much better. We do the same for this one. So we don't have to do it again. We'll go back to this part again. Yeah, so uh, initially, in terms of user experience, it makes sense. So when we come in and we have never got entered into this app, we should get this uh, screen. No lists, no lists available yet. So, but now here's a kicker. We need to give now the user the option to add a list, right? So this is why, again, I'll need to convert this into a column. And then below it, I'm going to now add this. Elevated button. Yep. But now, let's see if we can center this. Beautiful. Now the question is, do we need this center? And if we proceed to use cross, Oop. so we'll just use the center widget. There we have it. So we tell the user that you don't have a list, but you can add a new list. Let me just change add new list. Great. So another way, when we actually finish up, we can put this in its own class so that we can use it once instead of having a duplicate. We'll get to that. Um, so now we have that, let's try and add a new list. So we need to create add logic to this elevated button. Okay, so we'll come here and we're going to use the show dialog or the alert dialog because we're simply asking the user to enter the name of a list. So we don't need to give it a whole scaffold or a whole screen to just ask a user to enter the name. So we're just going to use a simple alert dialog. So we'll start by saying show dialog. And then we pass in the context. Then for the builder, build context, context. Then inside here, we're going to return. Let's first close this. We're going to return an alert dialog. There we have it. And inside this alert dialog, I'm going to use a small create. We're going to create a, a simple form. It will the, the text field will be inside a form just for us to have an easier time validating these text fields that we have. So first I'm going to Call in the icon const circle avatar radius 30. Icon icons dot add size 30. Next will be the content. And now our content is on that will hold a form. Come here and define it. Have it. So let's define our key first. Then let's define our child. We 
which will be a text form field should have just defined the text editing controller while I'm here is equals to text editing controller we pick this and proceed to add it here controller wait um let's add a hint text to tell the user to enter add name and then below this we're going to add a validator and inside here we'll just validate by saying if value is equals to null or value is empty return please enter a new list there we have it or else return now now let's add our actions so actions will hold an elevated button and our child will be a text widget that says add so let's get let's see how that uh, show dialog looks like fast so if we go back to our screen and click there we have it so we ask the user to add the name then we click on add great so um what i'm going to do is pick this guy first let's finish up so now let's add the logic for add where we are adding a new list or creating a new list so we'll need in our funk dot dot we have create list over here so that's what we're going to use So if form key current state so we'll need the name so it's name controller dot text right and then after calling this function which can do a navigator um, dot pop because remember it's an alert dialog. So we're popping back to our screen. And let's just clear our text form field. And then just do a set state just to refresh the state or the widget for us. So there we have it. So let's try again. Um, so here we have add new list. So let's add the list of home add. And there we have it. <laughs> so it has been able to display, but it's displaying the wrong text. So let's work on that, which would be at the top here. Hmm. Is it at the top or at the bottom? Yeah. In our list view builder, we have snapshot.data. Now that we have the data uh, over here, this is where we need to update now the text. Okay. So what we'll do is over here on our list view builder, it's under here. Whatever we get, we want to convert it to list. Uh, 
Uh, so we'll just say an entry list is equals to snapshot dot data entries to list and then this is what we will pass in our card so we'll come here and let's pass our text entry list index that value we expect the field name or the key, a key of name and we're just handling the null safety in case that's not returned and then we'll just use this again copy and yeah we have the name but remember we have uh, in our list style we're supposed to be able to tap on neat now to be able to view the items in that specific list we'll get to do that so we'll add some logic here now first let's just see our item there we have it we created a new list called home let's create another one maybe school so this add new list it's the one that's inside here wait so let's just copy let me see um Great. So we have extracted this so that we don't have to repeat it. That's a very that's large code to repeat over and over. So we just do let's see. The return is there. Okay. So we just pass this. Beautiful. Uh, let's see, we have an error. Okay, so let's just, there's something I've forgotten here. I'm supposed to pass in return to avoid that error that we're experiencing. So let's try again. Click on that. Sean. One, two, three, four. There we have it. Now if you click add new list, you should be able to add something else like work. Add. There we have it. If we add new, maybe <laughs> um, business add. So we are able to create our lists beautifully. Even if we decide to refresh, we'll still have them because they're being stored in our repository. But you can switch now this to maybe trying using Firebase, MongoDB. The logic is already there. As you can see, we're not, we haven't changed anything from the funk dot dot so what's next we have been able to view our list we're able to add a new list next thing is to be able to uh, we have our settings here and we have our view all items uh, so the next thing we can do is view this specific uh, list and see the items that are there right okay so back to our code let's design another class called view list dot dot create a stateful class you can call it view list and then it will hold a scaffold we'll define an app bar And this app bar will hold a title. And this title will be the name of that particular list. So let's leave it like that first. 
then just add our center false and then the leading we're just going to have some actions here let's leave it like that first we'll update as we go I think for leading we can set we want to manage that back button just to manage this state um, let's first add the rest and then we'll see how that will be necessary okay and then let's add the body so for our body we'll also need a future builder but the first thing we can do is just design um, we're going to use a list view again so this, let's just do that list view um, dot builder item count for item builder return child then inside here we will add leading that will have a checkbox I think we can leave it at that first and see how let's first see how it looks because that's the idea we're going to have a display of items for this specific um, list so let's come here on main and just add it view list context const view list and then in our list section um where we're going to add it is in the part of this card list style so here we're going to say navigator dot push named view list great uh, so if we decide to click on that beautiful Derek's is the right place now let's work on this so the idea is almost similar to the to the list uh, my list part the idea is that we're able to get into this uh, screen it checks if this list has items if it doesn't have show the empty uh, widget and give it an action for somebody to actually add and if there are items we're able to display them and this is the same place we're going to have the option of u and d update and delete for lists so we get to see that so let's start so let me just minimize this and um should actually retain the lists mm -hmm. so now let's design this guy so what are some of the things that this view list needs from the my list uh, class or from the list class lists class so one of the things that we need we're going to define it in a specific class called view arguments So one of the things that we need is a list name. We also need the list ID and this uh, screen will be shared. If you recall, we have, uh, if we go back this section, this one is going to allow us to view all the lists from all all the items from all these lists without categorizing them so when we click on this it will also direct us to this view list uh, 
screen we're going to use this uh screen for two functionalities to be able to see the items of a particular list and also to view all items that are existing in the database good so that's why we're going to add something called viewable all if you want to view all there's a small change in terms of uh, user interface but else we're going to display the default one the one that we have so we just want to define the constructor required this dot list name required this dot id and require and this dot all we don't have to pass it but when it's passed um, and it's actually true, we'll display a different user interface. Now we have that. Great. So um, for us to access this, we need to pass uh, on the list. We're going to change um, how we call the view list. So how we're going to call it is... Let me go to the main dot dot. And in this view list, we're going to call view list dot. Let's specify that at the top. Mm, over here. Let's say static cons root name is equals to view so we proceed to come here and say dot root name is equals to that now that we have that we go to our lists and inside here how we're going to call the view list will be different we're going to be passing the arguments so let's do that so it will be push named then we'll change this part and say view list dot root name let me import that then we're going to define the arguments by calling the class view arguments so it's already defined for us. We need an attribute for list name, which will be entry list. We all this. Then we just handle the null safety for just to be safe. And then we'll have this, but the key will be ID. Then we just handle the null safety. And there we have it. Um, so back to our view list. So how to get the whatever has been passed in form of an uh, the arguments that have been passed or the props that have been passed. We'll define it here. Final the arguments model root dot of context. The settings dot arguments as view arguments okay so now to access it for example in our app bar we want to specify the name of that particular list so what we're going to do is just call args dot list name remove the const mm -hmm. Null is not a subtype of your arguments. Let me try and refresh this. Just to be sure. And we haven't checked on how to, we need to I need to we need to add logic on the remember me so that we don't have to log in over and over again. But as you can see, we will see the list name. I think that's what we're going to do after this. We're going to go and handle the remember me so that we can be able to cache and say that keep me logged in so that we don't have to log in over and over again. Yeah. Um, we already have a function for that. So now let's work on our logic here. So 
Let's style it. Okay, so we'll have a list style and then the leading will be a check box that will hold a value for now we can set it as false and then on changed full value um yeah full value or just value and another thing that we'll have is A title Oops. title so we'll have a text this is where we'll have like item one item let's just use the index just set the font One tweet to bold. Great. Then we'll have a subtitle, which will be the description of the item. So let me just pick this. And then we'll have font size to 13 so this will be the description Eight. and lastly we'll have the trailing mm. let's add an icon button let's remove this first let's remove this first and leave it just like that now that we have this i want us to add the future builder oh man supposed to do that let's add the future builder So we'll have the future where we'll pass our function and then we have our builder. Snapshot. And then we'll return this. Then what the function that we'll be passing is get items. Let's inject func first. The mixing class. So we'll just say get items by list. So we need to pass the list ID, which will be the args.id and then the context. So with that. Let's do our check, the regular one, where we are checking if the snapshot has data. Hmm. Okay. 
if the snapshot has data but the snapshot that data is empty let's define the type here map string dynamic so that it knows what it's working with is empty we are going to call the we're going to design the empty widget instead of me designing it again let me just pick it from here as is return and then let me import the package and there we have it so instead of i list we will say no items no items and then um just a minute so if it's empty else cut that and paste and then uh we have this if snapshot has data else um we just call this if it doesn't have data right now let's add our um, where is it yes we have already added our function great so now let's uh, restarted the app let's just log in and sign in go to home we have an error okay okay let's add in the view list we have passed in the data type as this so we need to make sure our function also has that data type like so and just add future like that let's try again sean one two four sign in home there we have it so obviously our list the none of our lists have items now let's add an item how do we do that okay because we haven't added any action let's see that um so we have our back to our view list so in our actions on our upper the actions attribute let's add um icon button there we have it now we need because our item has almost more than two i think three things that we need to add to instead of an alert dialog we can create a screen for it and call it add item dot dot and then we create a stateful class add item scaffold then inside here we'll have our up bar let's remove the cons minimize this let's define our title add new item we want to also show which list this item belongs to so we'll have the name of the list there for now let's just leave it like that then we'll just add a style sex style font weight 
and font size okay so the reason why i'm saying that is because we need to create a class that will handle the arguments that we need or the props item arguments so we need the list id because we'll need it when saving an, an item then we also need the list name let's design the constructor required list at list id required this dot list name great so we have that now we need to go to our main dot dot, dot and add its root before that let me just proceed to go to view list and just copy this same logic and add it here but now we'll just say add and then we'll just define the same way as view list but now we'll have add item dot root add item great so when we come to view list on our icon button when we're calling it we'll say navigator dot push it navigator push named and then here we'll say add item and then we pass in the arguments item arguments so we need two things from here we need the list id which will get it over here and the list name there we have it so let me just refresh this but on the add item you want to see it so we'll just pass it here dollar sign args dot list name so like that remove the const pass it here oh, i'm calling it and i haven't defined it yet instead of rewriting it i'll just copy this and change the class to item arguments save now let's try and see if we can at least see the list name there we have it sean sign in home add beautiful so now let's proceed to work on the add new item body So there's a lot we need to do on this screen yet and now what you want to do you want to add an item and get to see the item here so that you can proceed to do to finish the other code operations for the list the list what we're remaining with is updating a list and deleting a list and for items once we add what we'll be remaining with is reading which would is displaying here so we'll remain with reading updating and deleting so there's a lot going on between in these two screens so but let's work on this once we are able to read our item we're done with that part and then we finish the other operations over here so in our body we'll need a form let's just define its key Better just pick it from 
Yeah, I'll be supposed to be. You can change the name to make it unique for every form. Key, then our child will be a column. Children. Uh, while we're here, let's just add the text editing controller name controller is equals to text editing controller we'll need the name and the description okay so inside here let's define the text form let's just pick from um, let's pick this one Say name controller, enter task item. Please enter task item or item name. And then we just pick this, copy it, and Defined for description, enter description, please enter, item description, there we have it, then next is the button, just define a simple button. It says add. Okay, so now let's uh, do some aesthetics to it before we actually add it. Right. And then this is where we'll add our logic if form key dot current state dot validate validate we'll proceed to call the create then if we have injected the mixing class there we have it create item where we'll need to pass the list ID text that's a very important factor that we need to work on let's work on it first um, initially it's false yeah when you're creating it's false We'll update it now on the other screen, the view list. So we have added that. Now what else is remaining? Our columns, our column is really stretched out. Let's add padding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's simply enough. So now let's... Um, and now create item what does it do it just sends a request mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so once we have created let's just add mm. now we get the user back to the view list
Okay. Let's refresh. There we have it. Sign in. Home. Let's add a new item. Shopping. Mainly groceries. Add. So we need to handle this part because if we go back. Okay, it's now able to see there's an item, but the user experience there is very off. We'll correct that. Um, but if you find that it has displayed that list to view, that means there is there are items. But now it's displaying the static um this uh, the four it's displaying four items because we defined it statically so now let's pick from whatever is passed from the back end so in our list we're just using the same logic copy paste that Then this should be description. And there we have it. Shopping mainly groceries, and that's what we had we added. So next thing would be um, let's try another. Let's try and add another one. But before that, um, so we have uh, created an item. We're able to view it. Uh, so we have update and delete but remember we also haven't done the update and delete for the list so let's do first for the list then we do for the items next it's all happening in the same screen so let me show you how so the idea is we want to manipulate the widgets that we have um, let me close all this we get to see it so what we need is um, in our actions, we need another icon button. Dot edit. So there we have it. So when I click on this, I'm just going to come here and define a variable of type of bool and set it as editable is equals to false and then when I click on that icon button I want it to set the state of that editable variable to true okay so we want to do a conditioning on our title where we say if it's editable we are going to show a text form field. We're going to show a text field in short. Okay, so the idea is if it's editable, we want to show a text field, else show a text. Let's just give it um, text editing controller. So we have that and then let's see what's up. Hmm. Okay. 
We just initialized our variable in the wrong place. It should be outside together with the text editing controller. We should be here. Sorry about that. So now we're able to see our text field. Um, let's give it a cursor. Give it a style. Right. So if we go back to our, app, if I click on this, we hope you get the idea. But now our name controller needs to be initialized with whatever currently that currently exists. So I need to come and say name controller dot text is equals to args dot list name. And then I'll be able to see it. Let me just go back, click this, edit. It's here, but the need to change the hint text. Is it the hint text or the text itself? Let me try and remove this. I think I'm the one who's... And there we have it. Be able to see it now. Let me just go back, click on this, edit. And there we have it. So I hope you get the idea. So what we want to do is just use whatever we have. When I click on home edit, it should be editable. Then we should be able to add something and save. So this icon of ours, I want us to change it. Um, let me show you how. So I want... Um, so right now it's editable here. But what I want to do is say it's editable. Uh, change to a different icon button and it will have a different logic now because now it will have the save icon and this is when I will add the logic for updating update list where we will need the ID which is the ID of the item and we'll need the name that has been changed the ID of the list and then the name of the list and then we pass in the context and that's the idea. And once we update, we just want to wait. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Let's look at our update list. We need to pass. Do we? No, we don't need to. So let's just remove this. So once we do this, we just want to navigate the user back to my lists. just to refresh that screen to make sure that that screen is refreshed and data and new data is received from the back end so that's what we're doing let's see how it looks let's just go back try again so home when we click this it's editable so that icon button is doing its role now let's see if the save button will do what it's supposed to do so i just want to write home stop when I click on save, we have an error. Let's see. My lists. Okay, let me see if I wrote it wrongly. Oh, it's lists. But the fact that it has 
gone all the way to this part we're hoping that it has changed the information let's see so you come here Sean not yet so let's click on this let's try again home stuff save there we have it so we've been able to s update our information uh, let's just say work duties beautiful so we've been able to update and so what's remaining is deleting a list okay okay so um in our view in our app bar what we did is in our actions we added this conditioning um in our specific uh in the specific icon button but i have an idea what if we say we check that conditioning over here so that we have a different array from the other one so uh, the default array will be a plus sign and an edit so let's do that So I've just removed that and then I just remove all this. So by default, if it's not editable, it should show the opportunity to be able to add a list and the option to edit. Oh, and the moment you click on edit and the editable is true, we want our upper, our actions attribute to change to showing the save button. After our user inserts, they click on save so it updates, which we have just seen. And we also want to add the delete. So we'll just come here. I'll just, it will also be an icon button. So I'll just say delete. Let's see how that looks. Let's just click on this. So what we want is when we click on the specific list, we have this. That's how we, we had it, right? So there's an op option to add an item and then we have the edit, okay? So what we want to do is, and there's, um, when we click on edit, not only does it show save, but also this will change. As you can see, now we have added. So we have a delete feature. And when we click on back, it should change the action back to this. So let's add the logic for that, which will be on the back. We just manage the leading uh, icon, which is the back button. what we want to do is say if it's editable that means it's showing the save and the delete and when we click on back what we want to do is return the state of the editable variable to false we'll get to see that else navigator but of context we go back to the previous screen, which is lists. There we have it. So let's try and see that. So what I mean is when I click on edit, if I decide to delete or save, if I want to go back, when I click on back, it should return the original actions that should be displayed when in the screen. 
but now when I click on back again it will take me to the previous screen so that's what we were handling so back here when you click on edit we want to delete our item so what we'll do we'll come here now delete um, feature here it is so we just need to remove this logic and now add the delete function but before we do that uh, for user experience when it's a function a feature like um, operation like delete when a user clicks on delete it's not ideal to just delete whatever they want to delete instantly it will be nice to actually confirm to the user that they actually want to delete they may have clicked on the delete button and they didn't want to delete the unfortunate thing about an operation like delete delete means getting rid of that specific data so if you delete it you, for you to actually read you can't retrieve it back but you can recreate it so in a situation like a mobile app development you might find somebody may click it but maybe they didn't mean to click it and that's why also the positioning of the buttons like delete cancel save really matters when you display them in your user interface so if you can see that the delete uh, icon that i have created uh, i have put it as a second not at the far end because there's a probability it's easy to actually click or pass your thumb there and end up deleting so I've just put it inside a little bit so that for you to actually go there you have actually intentionally gone to delete but still we want to make sure that the user we are confirming with the user that they do want to delete this data so we want to create an alert just to ask them if they really want to delete this list okay so how we do it is we use the show dialog we have context then we have build context okay so inside here we're going to create an alert dialog oops dialog and inside there let's design the icon I'll give it the icon, the delete icon. Give it a size. Positioned this in the wrong place. Cut. Next, we're going to have the content, which will be a text widget. And all we're asking the user is, do you want to delete this list? Okay. Then we just pass in our actions now. Our actions will be an elevated button. That says yes. And then the other one will be an outlined button. That says cancel. So in our cancel uh, button, we just want to say navigator dot of context. Actually, what we'll do is just do a navigator dot pop. And then we do a set state where we say editable is equals to false. So that's outlined. Let's just see how that looks. So when I go to home stuff and click edit and click on delete, here we have it. Do you want to delete this list? Yes or cancel. So when you click on cancel, it will go back. Beautiful. Now let's work on the logic of if the user clicks on yes, we will 
call the function delete list we already have it and pass the id the id of the list which will be args.id great and once we delete we just want to navigate back because if we delete that list we're not supposed to see that screen in total in totality so let's just handle that user experience so we need to go back to the list screen there we have it so let's test this So we click on edit we want to delete our home stuff so we click on delete do you want to delete this list yes go back and as you can see our list has been deleted great so our crude operations for lists is done now let's work on the items so for the items we're able to create a new item meeting important meeting okay it's not refreshing we'll sort that out and this is for edit so we want uh to manage the so we're able to create and we're able to read the item so we need to update let's work on that back to our code so we're going to perform almost the same logic as we've done for update in list so back to our list view which is here let's add a trailing and our trailing will have an icon button icons dot edit see how that looks yes and then let's give it a color so just to show that difference between the one at the top okay that's enough mm -hmm. so what we want to do is when we click on this edit it will also do a switch of an icon button which will be a save so to handle that we also need we had a variable called editable which is a boolean right but now in this case it will be quite unique because we can't have a static uh, variable what i mean is if you look at uh, the items that will be displayed here this text and this um this is just text right but if we decide to edit and make this guys editable in terms of uh, having text fields there's something called a controller and the controller has to be unique for every item okay so we can't just define one single item so we have to group them let me show you how that will go so we'll come here I'll first initialize three variables starting with map int bool update they'll be they'll all be map objects and then we'll have another one int will represent the index and we'll have a type text editing controller and say item name controllers then we'll have another one that represents the descriptions description so we have those two now let me show you how we're going to do this so in our list view here at the 
before we return the card we want to do some few settings so what we want to do is say that item name controllers dot put if absent we want to initialize all of them based on the index and define a text editing controller copy paste item description okay and then we also want to do the update one dot put if absent for each index set it to false so that each item or each text field uh, that we're going to design um, and each uh, boolean of the update variable each item has its own text editing controller its own uh, update um, setting set in state so when we get to add this that's when you're going to see what i mean so in the trailing we'll come here and say update index so what we're saying is that when we click on this trailing and if update index is true we just display the Not true if it's false because we've set all of them to okay we've set all of them to false right so if it's true it should be able to switch how do we do this um okay so um let's just add this this is in the wrong place so supposed to be here so what you're supposed to view is if the update index is true we want to see a different types of screen so we'll have a different type of icon button so we'll have another icon button of that will have the icons dot save that's the idea that's the idea so if update index if the update uh, variable of this specific in the update map object in this specific index if it's true that means the user has actually clicked on that trailing icon and they want to edit we convert this text to we convert this icon button to a save okay and this will have its own uh, logic and this one will have its own logic but if it's false which we have set by default to be false it should have the edit um, icon okay and in this edit icon we this is where when we click on it we'll just do a set state and set the update index is equals to true like so and so if it's true that means it will change this icon to save let's just try this and see so here we are we have our edit if i click on edit it changes to save as you can see so the idea of these two buttons is that when another thing we need to change is here so if we have the edit we also want to make this to i editable and then when we click on save it should save the data so back to our logic um, we'll just come here now we add the text fields okay so what we'll just do, we just pick the same logic here where we say if on the title, if tech update index is true, we want to show a text field and the controller will be item names controller and the index will be index. Else, show the text okay and the same thing we're going to do for the subtitle and now we're going to change the controller to description okay 
So if we go back to our logic here, when you click on edit, as you can see, it's now editable. But now we haven't set it with the text that uh, originally that was there. So to do that, we go back here on the trailing and we'll proceed to say update index is equals to true. Then item controllers index dot text is equals to entry list whatever we have there at the top in the text widget dot value name let's copy this and paste it here say item description and then this will be description okay so if we go back click on this edit as you can see we're able to see our text our item name and item description and it's editable beautiful so when you click on save now that's where we the update operation comes in when you click on save it should be able to update this for us so our logic will be here so we'll use the update item function that we already have and what we need to pass is the id which we'll get it from here then we'll have the list id which is we get it from there we have the name we have the description and then there's another important factor that we need to also handle uh, in our checkbox we set it we set a static value for it which shouldn't be the case so let's handle that so as you can see that is that that the, that uh, specific widget will be handled by um, will be displayed for the data will be different for depending on the item that's being displayed right so we'll come here and say and create an object as well as we did on the other ones and say bool completed is equals to this okay then we proceed to our checkbox mm, where is it here is it here it is so first thing what we're going to do is we're not going to display we're going to display whatever is passed from the back end and it holds the key status and then on change value here is where we add some logic so we also want to add the functionality of where is it this copy paste so we'll have uh, it will update all this and then instead of status here we'll pass in the value okay okay so we have that and then where we were on the status we'll just say uh, display completed index if it's not there set it to false and then we'll proceed to set state where now we'll set the update index is equals to false so it will return back the state of the card okay let's try this and see so if we go back and click on this and click on edit meeting uh, at 10 p.m and click on save so there is no update let's see um So we have this, oh, so when you're clicking on update, we need to change this. We're not supposed to pick whatever is in the entry list. We're supposed to pick what's in the item names, index, text, whatever the user has actually inserted. Let's do the same. 
description yes that's correct now so let's try again edit at 10 p.m save and there we have it edit not so important save and if we go back we go in we still have it and if we decide to click on select this it's not working let's see mm, check box let me go back and see it, it is working but the user experience is wrong so if i click on this i don't know why it's not updating let's see on change mm -hmm. and use that just added set state so if i click on this and select it updates if i unselect it updates so it's also updating in the back end so we have an up our update now let's work on our delete our delete will just add a simple we'll use the dismissible class to do that so all we have to do is in our card we proceed to add a dismissible okay and then we just give it a key let's give it a unique key okay so then we are, want to handle on dismissed what does it do sorry so what do we do here we want to delete an item so we can use the option to confirm if the user wants to delete which is the alert dialog that we created previously but let me show you how that looks so if we click on this this is what dismissible is but we So that's what dismissible is where you just dismisses it and it gets out of the widget uh it's deleted from the widget tree but let's improve the user experience a little let's uh, set the background So now you can see it, there it is. Okay, um, next. On the dismissible, let's add a secondary background. Show you how that will look. So we will have a container. Color. Dot red. Then you have a child will be a row and inside this row will have two children icons dot delete color colors dot white And then we'll have a text that says delete item. Let's give it a style. So let's see how that looks. So if we go to our work duties and swipe, wait, swipe. Okay, let's just uh, check. So a secondary container, let's add a padding because you can see it, but you can't see it properly. Let me see if the padding will help. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. I'll chat. Add because uh, it's we're viewing it at the far we're viewing it at the far left so let's just put it at the far right main axis dot end let's try that mm, there we have it so this is what I was trying so when we when he, when the user swipes like this they would see delete item so the moment they swipe it actually executes the on dismissed uh, function so inside there now that's what we call our delete item function and all we need to pass is the id and we'll get the id from let me just copy this this one paste great now let's try and see how that looks so we have our work duties I want to delete this specific item. If I go to work duties and click, we've been able to delete our item and it's viewing the cor it's displaying the correct widget if there is no item in a specific list. Right, so we have been able to do a cr the crude operation on items now. The next thing we can go focus on is this section. And what this section does is it, it displays all the lists, all the items, no matter which category they are in. You may want to see all the items that you have. So let's work on that part. And there isn't much logic that we are putting in because we're using the same view list uh, class. We're just trying, we're just going to manipulate the code a little bit. So in our icon by button in my list, in the lists, class in the up bar we had settings and we had more horizontal so inside here is where we're going to add some logic so we're going to navigate to the view list screen dot push named and then we specify the root so it will be view list dot root name remember the view list class expects some props and then the arguments will be view arguments and we'll need to pass in the list name we're just going to say all items and then we're going to pass in we're going to leave the id blank and then we're going to pass in this other attribute that we had set to be optional and set it to true now that means we want to tell say that we want to view all items so back to our view list so we go we head over to our list view over here remember we are calling get items by list so all we're doing is saying if args.all is true is equals to true we're going to call the other function that says get items else sorry call get items by list so that's what we're doing so let's try and see if we are on the right track so if we click on this as you can see we're seeing all the items let me add something on work duties um,
add. So if you go to all items, we should be able to see all the items in all the lists. Beautiful. So on the all items, we also want to handle this part. We shouldn't allow, uh, we want to leave this part as empty. So to do that, we'll just head over to the section that shows add and edit. And all we have to say is if args dot all is equals to true passing null else that so it should be as empty as yeah this is how it should look so when you go to the specific list we're able to manipulate but when you go and view all the list this is how it it will look great uh, so next thing and because we are using the same um logic in the view list this ones will also work so let's just proceed to the next thing before we proceed to the settings here i want us to add our bottom navigation bar that will show the home recipes and files so let's design that Let's close all this and then we'll come to the list section. So let's create a bottom navigation bar, which will do it over after the scaffold. There we have it. And inside here we'll hold items. So let's uh, specify our items. Sorry. Specify this of type bottom navigation bar item. Okay, now let's specify them. We'll start by adding the home. Which will hold an icon. Dot home. And a label. Let's see. There's something we're doing wrong. Navigation bar item. Mm -hmm. Icons dot home, and then we have the label which will read home. So that's the first one. Let's copy this and paste the rest. So we'll have home, restaurant. Then we'll have a chat bubble. We'll have a chat room as well to explain WebSockets, to showcase how WebSocket works in Dartfrog. So we have those four. Let's add the other configurations. So we want to specify the current index. So we'll get 
come over here and specify int selected index is equals to zero pick this mm, paste it there next we can specify the selected item color and set it to colors dot to blue and specify the unselected item color colors dot black show unselected labels true and selected label style we'll set the color as black font size 11 and selected icon theme icon theme data size 15 now let's handle the on top function so we will just create a simple function for ourselves here I'll just do it down below on item topped int index set state selected index is equals to index so if selected index is equals to one that means the second tab we're going to navigate to the recipes screen let's just instead of writing this let's just create it new file recipe dot dot recipe scaffold copy that then come and say navigate oops main dot dot recipe context const recipe so we'll just come here navigator dot push named recipe okay else if selected index is equals to two it will show us the file upload place to upload files so let's create the root for that new file file dot dot head over to before that stfl file scaffold and then in our main dot dot we pass that file let's provide a better class name file upload
And lastly, let's define a chat room. Dot dot. Great. So else, copy that and define that as chat. So we're handling what those diff the different tabs should do. Now that we have that, we can call this and pass it here. Great. So now let's let's log in and see how it looks. There we have it, we have home. Uh, the labels are not showing, let's handle that. Let's change here to show unselected labels. There we have it. Oh man, we didn't change the text. Home, recipe, files, chat room, much better. So if we go to recipe, we have recipe, but since we haven't designed anything yet, so it's blank. Okay, so next thing is, let's work on the interface for recipe, files, and then chat room. And then now we'll close in with uh, working on the settings part. So let's go to the recipes part. And if you remember the recipe part was to showcase the use of REST API. Just close this and remain with the recipe. Okay, so we have the scaffold. Clearly remove that because we will end up removing it either way when we add the app bar. Then specify the title. Good. Let's handle the leading button and just specify it as we did in one of the screens. Const icon. dot arrow back There we have it. Now let's work on the body. So our our widgets will be displayed in an alignment of we'll be using a column. So what we'll do, uh, let's create a column first. There is our column. But before anything else, um, 
because according to the design we, we need to allow the user to be able to scroll in case of depending on the size or the height of the device so let's uh, refactor that and wrap it with a single child scroll great now after that another thing i want to do just right away as we design is add the future builder because we don't have we're not using a specific action like a button action listener like a button or anything we just want to when we click on that it loads and displays the specific recipe so we want it at the point of the moment the screen is being loaded so for future builder we need to specify the future let's inject our mixing class and the function that we're going to use is get recipe and then let's handle our builder. And this is where now we will return this guy. Okay. So I don't want to add the const yet because we don't we won't have static data here. So let's just start by designing. So we'll have children. And inside here, the first thing we'll have is the image. So let me just call image.network. And we're going to pick whatever is passed on the snapshot.data. And then we call the key image. So first things, I need to make sure that there is data. If snapshot.has data, Else. I'm just going to pick our empty widget that we have been dis using this one and paste it here import the package and then just change the text no recipe no recipe available yet okay so there we have it. It says no recipe first because it's going to the backend and waiting for it to for the backend to respond. And now that it has displayed the image, that means we have data. Awesome. So let's design our image. Um, here it is. So we'll just give it a, let's give it a specific height. Does that look? Mm -hmm. Then we just want to add an error builder. Inside here, return placeholder with a fallback height 300. In case there's an error or there's a difficulty in getting the image, so that's all we've done. Next, we want to. Let's add the name of the recipe. So we'll call it by passing in snapshot.data name. And then let's just add a style here. Font weight, font weight.bold. Font size, 
16. Oops, const. Okay, let's align it. See if that will work. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Let's use align. Alignment, alignment, dot center. There we have it. And now, lastly, let's add the description. There's so much that the API returns. We're just going to display the text and the description of the recipe and you can continue to explore some of the attributes or the keys that are being returned ingredients and all that and just pass it in but the last thing we're going to add is the description dot data description there we have it so let me just pad this guy um factor padding looks much better well, let's just use 20 great that's our recipe it looks clean and neat so let's just add our bottom navigator and instead of writing it again i'll just copy this Come here and paste and then I'll proceed to pick this function and then I'll proceed to pick this variable so selected index is 1 Let's see how that looks beautiful so it shows we are in the recipe tab now let's work on the files so we'll have an upper so i can just click from the recipe tab and click file it's blank great so inside the upper, I'll just specify the title, const, text, file, upload, style, font width, font size, there we have it. And then let's work on the body. So we'll have a single child scroll view and then we'll have a child and we'll pass in a column our column will have children and inside here we'll specify an elevated button dot icon sorry oh elevated button So this will be label and we'll close write the text click to upload file and lastly we need the icon So let's just align it at the center. Align. 
alignment better mm -hmm. then the next thing will be const being able to upload and also view files that you've uploaded from the back end so we are adding that section so we'll have sample card here of how it will look Copy. So this will hold a file name. And then for trailing, we'll have so take the scenario where we'll have like multiple of displays like such. So where you get to see the files that you've uploaded. Let me see. Uh, cross alignment. Let's start. Yep, that's better. But now let's add the padding. I think that's clean and neat. So here's the kicker, guys. Uh, for the file upload, it's a bonus. I'm going to actually put the code in GitHub. I'm not going to explain, uh, add the logic here on the tutorial. So if you know how to access the sources of this uh, code, you'll be able to see uh, the sources for both the back end and the front end. If you remember, we didn't do the back end side of file upload, but you'll get it there. And also on the front end, you'll have the logic there. So I'll just leave this as is, and you'll be able to get it from. Um, we'll stop from. He we'll stop here on the part of file upload, and for the code, you'll just get it in the GitHub uh, repository. So let's look at the chat room, which will ex will showcase the WebSocket uh, communication. Uh, between the server and the client uh, but before that let's just add the navigation bottom navigation bar um, where is it we'll use this zero one two and then I'll just proceed to pick this you can actually add this in one place and then just reuse it. And there we have it. Yep, so it shows that we're in the files tab. So guys, as I said, the sources, you'll just get them on the GitHub. Um, that shows how to push a file to the backend. Um, so with that, let's go to the chat room, which we already designed, the we created the class for it. So in the chat room, we have our scaffold. Let's add our up bar. Define the title. chat room then we'll have the body and inside we'll have a column and that column will have children and the children will consist of two things another column that holds the messages that will be passed so 
so i'll leave this as that first so that's where the messages will be displayed and then we'll have another one a row which will have a form of a text field where a user can enter a message so we'll just have children text field and then controller let's define one here final text editing controller message controller is equals to text editing controller pass this here let's add an input decoration and say hint text enter message great next um let's put that as const for now and we just add a spacer and then we'll have an icon button So we'll have, if you click on this, see, mm -hmm. chat, main dot dot, we have, should be fine. Let me try and log in again. Sean. Hmm. okay okay so for our text we let's wrap it up with a sized box give it a width There we have it. So we have our message. Okay. So what we need, we need these things to be at the bottom. So let's just uh, do this. Let's first lock the height. this is the one that can help us push everything down let's see yep great but now we can't see it let's pad it pad 
块冰。Only want to part the bottom right and left. So something like fifty, twenty. Twenty, right? So we able to see the message. Okay. So what else? So now it's to call our function. Um, but before we do, let's create a function here. Get messages. String message. So we'll have a variable called messages of type list widget. So we'll say message dot add text. message the color will be whatever whatever color has been passed So we're going to pass this get messages over here on send. And we're going to be picking whatever has been passed on message controller and specify the color. So there's that and then there's what will be passed will be received from the server we'll set it as blue so for us to do that let's now work on the handle the web socket part because there's some logic that needs to be implemented as well on the flutter side so let's go to our terminal And we'll say flutter pub add web socket. Web socket channel. That's what we're going to use to implement that. Great. So now we have it. Let's uh, initialize it over here. So we'll say web socket channel. channel is equals to dot connect so we'll need the uri the uri string so the uri string will be ws let's just add it in our constants to avoid any just to Feel a little bit organized because we also will say ws is equals to let me just copy all this ws yep yeah. so we'll copy this and pass it here let's import the constant dot dot So there we have it. And then in our init state, we want to listen.
so we'll get messages so whatever we receive from the server side we'll just format the message to be blue just to show who is who that's all we're doing wait so uh, then let's just make sure we dispose dispose and close it once we are done yeah simple as that so the WebSocket channel we need it to be able to connect with the WebSocket um, com uh, URL that has been opened in the backend side and then it will also listen as the server is listening it's also listening so when the server listens it will echo whatever the client has um, has sent to the server and also the client which is a flat application will receive whatever the server has echoed so that's how simple that's how simple we have made it it would be with just that simple logic you can try you can actually create a, ch a full chat application of multiple users but the simplest way that we have done it is we're just letting the client listen to whatever the server is passing and the server is listening to what the client is passing and we're just displaying that and whatever the server will pass for now it's just echoing whatever the client has um, has sent to the server so in another scenario you would find that um, uh, one client would actually send to the server and the server will just um, print out and then also someone else will also send something to the server it's it's a um, with this simple concept it's very easy to plug in now the full part of our chat application but this was just to show you how you open a web socket and you're able to communicate to the client and server it's a duplex way of communication so let's just uh, go back to our app and see how that will work let's uh, send a chat like hi Hmm. okay let's go back to our code we're able to listen but we are not sending so <laughs> so at the point of adding this get messages i need to send something to the server so that they know what they, they're able to get something from my side so you need to say channel dot add dot sync sorry dot add whatever the user has passed so that's the part that we were missing and then I just clear my text field so let's try that again hi hello okay let me see if my backend is it's actually running maybe it's the font Let's see, let's see, let's see. Where's this guy? Oh, we didn't pass the messages, goodness. So we just remove this. It was actually empty. It's supposed to display whatever has been, whatever is in this um, variable messages. Now let's do it again. <laughs> um, hi. Let's just save this. What am I supposed to... Okay, let's see. I'm sure there's something else I've missed out on. Mm. Okay, just uh, just refreshed the screen, the app. Let's try again. So let me say hi. Great. So the server is able to echo. So this is, if you remember, this is a text we added. On the server side so it's just echoing whatever it has received from the client it's just echoing so it would be so cool if it was possible it is possible i'm sure but we haven't done it in this tutorial we can actually implement ai on this uh, maybe integrate with open ai on the server side so when the person sends hi it's able to respond to an actual uh, give an, um, an actual response that would be really really cool to be honest it's very interesting to actually try 
but we can see the WebSocket communication is working basically. So cool. We are done with the WebSocket. Now let's finish up on the settings and we should be good. Um, so I think we already created a settings. We didn't. Beautiful. So let's create a file settings dot dot. And this says TFL settings. Sorry. So there we have it. It will be a scaffold. And then we'll just come here and say settings. There we have it. And then in our list class. Where these settings we now navigate named settings. So let's try that. Great. Now let's work on our settings screen. So our settings screen will have we want to give the user the option to delete an account so that you can see the concept of authorization if you if you uh, remember in our when we were designing the back end side uh, we had an option where we provided uh, the logic to delete a user but if you remember we were checking something we were checking a specific condition before we delete we had to check first if that user is actually the the owner of this uh, account before we delete the user so that's what's called authorization so we're going to do that let's just design a simple more of like a profile screen very very basic so there we have it then we just have our title that says settings as simple as that then let's work on our body we'll have a column they will have children and inside here our first child will be circle avatar mm, let's give it a background colors dot blue Uh, we don't want to add const here for us because we'll be let me just add it just to avoid all this and then we'll just give it a radius of 50 how does that look and then we just come here and let's assume that's the section of a profile image now let's proceed to add our functionalities. So in this case here, you'd actually uh, your name. And then we just style it. Oops. Style. text style twelve gray okay Yep. The next thing is the subtitle. Wrong place. Subtitle. And this is where we need to use provider. 
we'll get to do that in a few just a minute let's add now the a card it'll be two cards one card will say delete account and the other card will be change password oh and then we'll have another button just to say log out so that we can also allow the user to log out and that's where if you remember there's a part that i didn't show you how to set a value or cache something in the redis remember we were checking and obviously there wasn't nothing that we had not set anything that's the part i need to show so that i can show you how logout also works uh with uh, the redis caching part so we'll close in on that so let's just create our card quickly so inside here we have a title const text delete account and then we have a trailing icons delete color blue beautiful and then let's create another one here for change password edit actually let's set this to red yep and then just add the text button log out okay so we have the three main functionalities we have your name but we need to display the name next so to do that we'll import we'll add um create a new file called custom you can give it any name cast i'm just giving it a custom provider dot dot then i need to import the provider package wait so let's work on the logic for this it's quite small we just want when we log in be able to save the state of the information of the user throughout the application so we need the provider so let's define the class as customer provider extends change notifier and inside here we'll have sorry map string dynamic user so it will come in a object of type map and then we also want to have the option to get this information so we'll just use the get ta method user and it should return that uh, the information in this variable so we want to create a function that will allow us to store this string dynamic And then we proceed to say user dot add all usr so it's a way of copying from one map object to another map object if you want to do that you just use add all then we run the notify listener and we're done so now we need to do a configuration on the main dot dot to be able to support the provider that we have added so just to run up multi provider p 
for providers will have change notifier create custom provider and then we'll proceed to call define our child is it here or my app like that so we need to refresh everything see if our app is working it's working so now at the point of signing we'll proceed to funk dot dot uh, the function where we sign in which is get user mm -hmm. here it is so get user uh, the only thing we do here in terms of logic is navigate to the list class but what we want to do before we navigate there we want to store this information so I'll just come here and create an instance of the provide of the provider class that we have created. We can define it at main dot dot. Proceed to define an instant customer provider, an instance of custom provider. then let's go and use it in our function get user using basic say custom provider dot set user and then we'll pass value dot data as we're just casting it with a data type of map string dynamic Close that. Great. So let's try and refresh this. But for us to see if it's working, we need to use it. So we'll head over to our settings where we were supposed to specify the name of the user, your name, and then here we'll proceed to call the instance customer provider dot user and then we pick the key name. So let's remove the cons from here. Save that. Refresh. Let's log in. Sean. Sign in. If we head over to settings, as you can see, we are now able to to display the name of the users of the user. Beautiful. Now let's proceed to. delete so for delete account we'll just create first we just ask the user do you want to delete and then we delete them i was thinking before we delete let's just change do the change password see that the log out and then we delete the account because if we delete the account we'll need to sign up again it will be nice if we fulfill we finish most of the logic before we delete this account and sign up again so let's just work on change password first so I'll just create a class, change password dot dot and call it change password, which will be a scaffold, move the const, define the app bar. this okay and then we'll have the body and our body will form will be a form 
which requires a child, which will be a column that will hold children. Great. So over here, let's uh, define a few variables, starting with um, the form will have a text field where the user will enter the old password, the new password, and the confirmed password. So if you remember when using the basic authentication, if you want to update anything, because change password is just up, it's an update operation, you need to uh, your authentication has to be valid. So if on the on the middleware, if you remember, we we have we have we authenticate the user if it's an update operation, uh, if it's any other operation other than create operation, right? So for the update operation, we you can't it won't go through if you if you pass in the username and the new password. It has to be the old password first, so that we know you are you're actually the person who wants uh, the your you know your it's a way of validating or authorizing that this person is actually the person they say they are and now they can update the password so we'll pass the old password in the authorization header and then we'll pass in the new password in the body so for the text editing controller we'll need the old password let me copy this we'll need the new password and also we need to confirm uh, the password that this user is inserting which is a new one but that one is only a validation within the form within the app we don't pass it to the back end and then let's just define the key for our form We'll pass it over here. Great. Now let's work on our children. Before that, let me head over to main.dat so that we see what we are doing. Uh, change password pass context const change password. Great. So that we head over to our settings and uh, on top, we'll proceed to navigate. Dot push named change pass. Okay, so if we click on this, we are now in our screen. Let's work on it. Proceed to work on it. So in our column, we'll just have a text, const, text, create new password. Let's style it a little bit style text style font size 18 font weight bold okay and then let me just set a padding on the form better okay our next uh, widget will be another text that says your new password must be different from the old password let's style it Let me see. Now let's just leave it as is. It's supposed to be smaller than the, the one above it. It's okay. Now let's create our text form. Honestly, I would prefer 
let me just pick um, one of the text forms that we have here you should even take the one for the password because it has everything the obscure attribute and all so I'll paste that this will be for the old password old pass then we'll have please enter then we have another one which will be the new password new password please enter new password and then lastly we have confirm password confirm password please confirm new password great confirm enter new password enter old password better now let's enter our button let's insert our button will hold a text widget that says update there we have it let's align it to the right better Mm, what else? What else? New password, old password. Mm, I think we're done. Now let's add the logic in our button inside here so first we check if new password dot text is equals to confirm password dot text if not we'll create a snack bar Show snack bar. Content will be called a text widget that says new password. And confirm password. Do not match. We get to test that. We can test it right now. So let me insert anything here. Then let me insert two, 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 three, 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 three. So as you can see, new password and confirm password do not match. If I clear this and enter the correct new password won't do, do anything because we haven't added the logic for it let's add that so it's simple as calling our function we need to let's inject our mixing class here with funk great so now we call our function update 
user using basic so what we need to pass first is the id we'll get it in our provider dot user id but the next thing we need is a name as well so we'll just copy this enter name and the username then we'll pass in the new password the old password and context so the old password is for authentication purposes great is there anything else and once we change the password whether it goes through or not we just need to sign the user out and ask them to log in again okay let's test this um change password let's enter our old password which is that then we enter a new password and update so it has signed us out so let's try enter with the old password first sean unable to sign in so let's enter with our new password Great. And let's try and do something else. We on change password. Let's try and enter the wrong old password. So right now my password is 2222. So I want to change it back to 1111. No. So my current password is 2222. So let me enter the wrong one, which is maybe 3333. Three, three, three. And I want to change it to 1111. 1111. But my current correct old password is two four times but we have entered the old password as three four times and we want to change it to one four times so if we click on update it will say fail to process so the authentication didn't go successfully even if we decide to log in and enter the the let's try and enter the new password that we wanted to update which is one four times it will fail and if we try to enter with the old password that we had inserted in the form, which was which is actually wrong, three, four times, one, two, three, four, it will fail. So that means the change password did not change because it's still our old one, which is two, 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 two. I hope that makes sense. So in entering the old password, it's used for authentication purposes. If the user enters a wrong old password it won't change the password but it will still ask you to log in just to make sure you're the person who you say you are now let's work on the delete account no log out and in the process of uh working on the logout we'll also work on the remember me that's in the signing because the logic uh, is around the caching aspect okay so let's go to settings and on logout, all we have to do is use the function that says set login status. I don't think we have injected the mixing class here. Okay. So we just say set login status to zero. We want to log out and we said to stay logged out, we are using the flag zero stay logged in using the flag one so when we say set login status to one it will proceed to go to redis and cache the key logged in as zero okay and then after doing that we just proceed to navigate to the sign in class let's try that and see so if we decide to log out it will take us here i want us to do something i want us now to handle this remember me so you see how it works because now with remember me what it does it sets 
ba based on whatever the user checks if you check on this that means you want uh, to set the login status to one so that you're always logged in let's try that uh, so back to our sign in this checked checkbox li checkbox list title this is the one we're talking about so already we have been able to handle that listening to when it's checked or not checked so all we have to do is if we go to our sign in where is it where is it mm. get user using we want to add something else here let's add a type of bull remember me and then inside here after navigator Get user using basic. Uh, am I on the right? Yep. Uh, okay. Let's just put this one here. It was in the wrong place. So over here, after navigating to the list, we, let's just set the login status as the user has requested. So it will be based on whatever has been passed on this variable. So if remember me is true, that means they have checked, they want to be remembered. We set it to one, else we set it to zero. So that's what we have done. And in our signing now we need to pass uh, remember me this one we need to pass it so now let's refresh and try again so here we are we say Sean uh, what was my password again <laughs> and then we sign in so if I decide to refresh this again let's say I'm opening the app it will ask me to sign in because I didn't request for to be remembered so if I enter the credentials again and say 2222, remember me, sign in. Let's try and refresh again in a situation where we are opening the app once more. If I click on this, it directs me straight to the app. So I hope you're seeing how set login status and get login status work, which are functions that uh, connect with the root that is based on caching. So we've simply done that. But in the process where we decide to go to the settings let's see there's a null ah uh, so we need to handle the part where okay okay i get it i get it so that's a small feature where now in case you decide the user decides to stay logged in we need to store that information in like a local database uh so that's a very minimal logic i think i'll leave it to you to add that so that if the user is logged wants to be logged in once they get in you just read from maybe a local uh, database or SQLite or something like that um, or even better yet in the process of passing this set login status which is this we can return something from the back end that returns the user information that we want to use which is mainly the name which is mainly the the name itself yeah only the name actually so this request can just return that instead of handling a local database within the app so those are two option guys <laughs> but our caching is working well um so yeah so what else is remaining we now let's proceed to do the last work on the last feature which is delete account 
So now when we delete the account, we're able to see whether we can try and log in or not. So for delete account, um, we'll come here on top. And then we'll just remove this. And then let's just be let's be modest and ask the user just confirm with the user if they actually want to delete because if they delete they need to create a new account so we'll just say that build context and then we'll return on a lot dialog icon const circle avatar with a radius of 30 child will be an icon icons dot add delete Let's see how that one will look. Size 30. Next will be the content. Const text. Are you sure you want to delete your account? And then we'll have our actions which will be an elevated button and the child will be a text that says yes okay then we'll have another button but it will be an outlined button to just show the difference console Let's see how that looks. Great. Are you sure you want to delete your account? Yes. Cancel. Okay. Um, this remove does not make sense. Let's just put delete forever. Don't know how that will look. Yeah. Let's just put it like that. And then if it's cancelled, we'll just say navigator dot pop. So if we click on this console navigator dot pop else, if this is a case, we'll just say delete user using basic. And we'll need the ID. So we'll just say customer provider dot user ID. Let's try that. So if you say delete, yes. Okay, I haven't proceeded with the user experience, so we can't know. But let me just refresh this and try and sign in. Yep, I'm deleted. But uh, let me just finish up with the user. So the point of deleting, let's just say navigator dot push named sign in. Or you can just take them to the landing. Yeah, let's just take them to the landing. So let's refresh this. I'll need to create a user. We do that again. So sign up, let's create Sean again. Sign up, sign in, and then we'll come here and decide to delete. Yes, it will take us here. If we try and log in again, we're not in, beautiful. So we've been able to create, uh, this is the last, um, feature 
uh, that, that is in our app and we have played around with most of the functions that we have the only thing that we have done is that uh, we have picked one of the many for example uh, when it's creating or performing crude operations on items or lists, we decided to go with the one that just stores in memory. But we have also added all the functions for like Firebase, MongoDB. So you can switch up. You can decide, I want to use Firebase. You just make sure your configurations are okay on the back end and then just call these functions. Where I was calling create lists, you can decide to call create list using firebase okay and then for the authentication i just decided to choose one of them i decided to use basic authentication but i've also added the logic for bearer authentication so wherever there is basic authentication functions called if you want to use bearer you just switch up so where i i um I passed in create user using basic just pass in create user using bearer because I've already added the logic and it's just up a matter of testing so with that done we are done with the flutter development side using dart frog and we have also integrated with our dart frog backend I hope the tutorial has been uh, uh, eye-opening and also <laughs> exciting as well since we are mobile devs um, but you find that time, that comes a time where we need to also have um, uh, make sure our backend the backend of this mo amazing mobile apps that we're creating are we're able to understand them and also manage them in some way and not leave it to a backend team so with that frog the beauty of it we have been working throughout with just one language which is that frog which is amazing so you don't have to like switch your brain from one language to the other and for flutter developers it's even beyond amazing because you don't have to create in uh, one language and then proceed to maybe Node.js or Python. We've been working through that, using that throughout. We have tapped on the a majority of the concepts in backend, which we, the ones that we haven't, you can share in the, in the comments down below, or you can also play around and also share with me either in any, any platform that I have, just to engage me and we see how, um, and I also get to learn from you guys. So with that done, uh, I'll see you on the next one.